Hello, this is Milton. In this short tutorial, I'll quickly introduce you to the concept of OAuth and how it can be used. OAuth is an open standard for authorization. It allows users to authorize websites to access resources on other websites but without giving them the passwords. It is widely adopted. Uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Yahoo, etc. They all have adopted the OAuth standard. To better understand the concept of OAuth, uh, let's look at this fictitious example. Consider John Doe, who is a fictitious character. He has both a checking and a savings account with Bank of America. In addition to this account with Bank of America, John Doe also has accounts with various other financial institutions. In this example, there is also a fictitious company called finance-dashboard.com. Uh, this is a third-party vendor that provides John Doe with a consolidated dashboard of all his account statements. Now, F finance dashboard needs to retrieve uh, the statement balances from Bank of America, E-Trade, and so on. One way of accomplishing this is for John Doe to provide his credentials to Finance Dashboard and then Finance Dashboard in turn makes a call to Bank of America with the credentials and Bank of America can then give the statement balance to Finance Dashboard uh, that can be displayed on the dashboard. However, this approach is very insecure and uh, is not recommended at all. Now, the approach that we discussed in the previous slide is undesirable for all the three parties concerned. John Doe shouldn't be handing out passwords, and these credentials can be compromised, and these credentials themselves have a lot of power besides retrieving account statement balances. Uh, they can be used for balance transfers, bill pay, and so on and so forth. And also, John Doe needs to needs to be aware of what will happen if he in the future stops using finance dashboard services as well. Bank of America, on the other hand, does not want their users to hand out passwords to other third-party vendors. Uh, there is no sure way for Bank of America then to figure out if a transaction is valid or not. Finance dashboard also finds this uh, approach undesirable uh, because Finance Dashboard now has the added responsibility of securely storing user credentials. And also user adoption of Finance Dashboard services will be minimal because users may not trust uh, when they ask for their password. So to mitigate all the previous, uh, uh, the previous uh, problems, um, OAuth is, uh, is the perfect solution. Uh, the problem in the previous slides can be alleviated if Finance Dashboard has only limited access to Bank of America, only limited access in the sense that it can only retrieve statement balances, and John Doe doesn't have to share credentials with Finance Dashboard. This can be accomplished using OAuth. So how is OAuth set up? In this slide, we'll quickly find out how OAuth is set up. So even before John Doe comes into the picture, there needs to be some setup done between Bank of America and Finance Dashboard. Uh, the system administrators from both Bank of America and Finance Dashboard work together to establish the shared secret, uh, assuming requisite commercial agreements are in place. Uh, the system administrator from Finance Dashboard requests for OAuth client from Bank of America and uh, Finance Dashboard receives uh, the OAuth client ID and OAuth secret key from Bank of America. Once Finance Dashboard has OAuth Client ID and OAuth Secret Key, then John Doe can sign up for Finance Dashboard services. 
So the first time that uh, John Doe signs into finance dashboard, initially there are no bank accounts. Uh, just an option to add a bank account. John Doe attempts to add Bank of America. He is then redirected to Bank of America website where he is prompted for credentials. Now this is very important uh, to note. Uh, John Doe is not providing the credentials to finance dashboard. John Doe is redirected to Bank of America and he is only providing the credentials to Bank of America. Upon successful authentication, John Doe Bank of America prompts John Doe if he's okay with finance dashboard accessing resources on his behalf. Once John Doe agrees to that, finance dashboard is then able to access resources on his behalf. In the next slide, we'll see how this all happened behind the scenes. So we'll start from where John Doe attempts to add a bank and he wants to add Bank of America and Finance Dashboard has just redirected him to Bank of America website. In addition, Finance Dashboard also sends a couple of hidden fields to let Bank of America that this request was originated from Finance Dashboard. Uh, the hidden fields, uh, one of the hidden fields is OAuth Client ID uh, that identifies that the request came from Finance Dashboard. And another hidden field is uh, redirect URI. So after successful authentication, Bank of America can redirect John Doe back to this URI. So upon successful authentication, Bank of America prompts John Doe if he is okay with Finance Dashboard accessing resources on his behalf. Once John Doe agrees to that, Bank of America redirects John Doe to Finance Dashboard along with an authorization code. Uh, the key thing to note here is that Bank of America does not supply the access token at this point. For Finance Dashboard to obtain the access token, Finance Dashboard must make another explicit call to Bank of America. Now, Bank of, uh, now Finance Dashboard makes an explicit call to Bank of America providing the following values. Uh, it provides the OAuth client ID, the OAuth secret key. Uh, together it identifies that this request is indeed coming from Finance Dashboard and it also sends the OAuth code uh, that Bank of America just sent uh, based on John Doe's request. Only at this moment does Bank of America give Finance Dashboard an access token. Uh, Finance Dashboard can then use this access token to access resources on behalf of John Doe. Now this access token has limited scope and it also has an expiration token uh, or it has an expiration time frame as well. In this uh, scenario described, uh, there are possibly three or four major players. Uh, so you have the resource owner, uh, that's the user, John Doe, and you have finance dashboard. Uh, sometimes uh, it is uh, also referred to as the application, the OAuth client or the client, uh, because finance dashboard is the client making the request to the server. And Bank of America is also referred to as the OAuth server or the OAuth provider, uh, also the authorization server and the resource server.